Hello and welcome to Christie's Cropping and Creating. Welcome back for those of you that have watched my videos before. This one is going to be really quick. I have two very short tips that I want to share with you. One is maybe personal preference, but it's something that I thought maybe wasn't very important to a layout uh, when it's when it's asked for or called for in a project recipe. And I discovered last week that it really does make a difference. I don't have multiple samples to show you, and I'm not actually going to be creating in today's video, but I just wanted to show you a really quick thing that will add a little bit of punch to your layout, a little bit of extra um, power, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what the right phrase is. Again, thank you for watching. I'm going to switch over to my desktop so that you can see what I want to show you. <laughs> okay, so I've already put this layout together with the exception of one piece. I'm wondering if you can see what is missing on one side. It is the trim strip, right, that goes right here. So, and that's what I'm calling it. I'm calling it a trim strip. I don't know why. But um, over here, you can see I've got my designer paper, I've got my base page, and then in between the two, I've just got this little bitty thin trim strip. Now, in this case, it's a quarter of an inch. And I used to quite often skip this step if, if a recipe called for a quarter inch piece or maybe even up to a half inch piece, because I was like, ah, it doesn't make that big of a difference. But I have been adding them more often than not here recently, and I just really uh, came to appreciate how much that extra little strip can add to your layout. So in today's video, this is actually the only thing I'm going to be adding. And look at that. I mean, you know, you go from, from a little on the plain side to just having a little extra pop. So I'm going to add this down. Let me put my adhesive on. Y'all know I use repositionable adhesive, and I'm going to use it over here on my silicone mat. And then I'm just going to pop this in place. And then the other idea that I want to share with you um, it's also kind of a tip and kind of a an idea on its own, but I'm not actually going to be cutting anything out. So like I said, this video is going to be really short. Now, if you don't already have an advisor that you shop with, I would love to help you. My website is creativememories.com slash user slash Christy Bolin. Christy is spelled K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N. And you can reach me by email at christybolin at gmail.com. And again, that's K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N at gmail.com. The only special like going on right now with creative memories we've already had our black friday bundles and right now there are some advisor only specials so if you're at all interested in becoming an advisor i do have a special that i am offering to people that join my team so you can reach out to me by email and let me know that you're interested in uh, becoming an advisor and then i'll explain the 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 bonus that I'm offering to those that join my team. And then the great thing is, is that right now, since there's advisor only specials, you'll have access to that automatically. I'm not sure if that ends on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving or if it goes all the way through Thanksgiving week next week. I do know that it's while supplies last, but quite honestly, I forgot to check the end date before I started my video. So my next tip is one border three ways here is one mittens and flurries here is a second mittens and flurries border and here is a third so as you can see it takes on a completely different look 
based on your base paper and your the paper that you're actually punching the border out of. I have seen a lot of people do the mittens and flurries border and, and you're going to be able to tell that I haven't used my brush pen yet or I haven't used this brush pen yet. They're taking the brush pens and they're coloring in some of the mittens and some of the, the snowflakes or the little swirly things with the various colors and it really, really, really looks good. But I wanted to see what it would look like with a designer paper and so this was the first one that I punched out and I used it with our Elegant Moments paper pack that um, you will have to talk to an advisor to get this paper pack. It's a really neat pack and um, as you can see it does have like some silvery looking snowflakes on it. Oh you know what? <laughs> I didn't even plan this. That's actually the same, sorry that my arm's going to be in the way for just a second. Ah, I can't get it back. That's the same paper that I used to make this idea. This paper, this is the paper that I punched the mittens and flurries out of. And then this is the paper that is also in Elegant Moments. And then I used Platinum Shimmer and White to make my four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo mats. I did add some embellishments that you can get from your advisor um, because it's advisor exclusives. Again, it's called Elegant Moments. This is the back of that paper. This is like a, um, a pretty leaf design, but I liked this um, more um, tonal side better. So anyway, I did not even mean to go off topic, but... <laughs> I punched this out of that snowflake paper and then I just added the platinum shimmer base to it. So when you punch out this border, it does stay attached to your page. Like it, it punches the, the negative space, the little mittens and the, the dots and all that. It, it comes out as confetti from your from your punch. I should have brought some in here so that I could show you, but it's in the other room and I'm not going to go grab it. I, um, <laughs> I saved a lot of that confetti and gave it to somebody to make a shaker card. But so when you punch it out, then you're going to need to cut that border off of the paper that you just punched it out of. And I chose to do this at one and an eighth inches. And that gave me the perfect border along the top and along the bottom. And then my my base for this border was oh goodness I forgot to do my cheat measurements let's see what that is I think it's one and four eighths is what I came up with if I can read my ruler give me one second no one and five eighths I think is what I did no no I did it at one and three eighths. So the whole, the base is one and three eighths and the, the border itself is one and one eighth. Okay. So this black piece of cardstock that I punched the mittens and flurries out of, it really, really looks good in the dark color with the light background. Again, I've seen people take their brush pens or even the uh, um, fine tip pens to color in these things and even the dot tip pens would work well to color in some of these designs if you've got a light background. Now if you have a dark background only the metallic pens or the brush pens would really work well because you're going to be coloring in on the dark paper. But I thought it really looked nice to have the light background, in this case white, on top of the black as well. So again, this is just one border, three different ways, and they're all exactly the same with the with the exception of the paper that is on top and the paper that's on bottom. Um, these two are just the reverse of each other. At first, I did try to see what this would look like if you put the um, 
the mittens and flurries punched out on top of the snowflake paper, but it, it really just didn't do anything for it. So I decided to leave it this way and, and there you go. That's all I have to share with you today. I hope that you enjoyed this and learned that it really does make a difference to add a trim strip to give an extra pop. And then I hope that you enjoyed seeing <laughs> the differences as I fumble with papers here on my desk, the difference that the choice of your top paper and your base paper can make in making just a very simple border to go on a layout. And I'm gonna add one more thing. I just told you that this is one and three eighths of an inch. I'm really a fan of thinner borders. Now this one is one and a half and then that's a quarter. So this, this whole thing would be one and three quarters wide, but I'm a fan of the thinner ones instead of the ones that are just really, really chunky and take up so much of your page mainly because I like to get a lot of photos on my layouts. So you can do what you want to do. Like if you want the thicker one, absolutely. You can just add more layers to your papers and to your bases and make it as thick or as thin as you want because there is no right or wrong in scrapbooking. I hope that y'all have a great week. No, let me let me rephrase that. I hope you have a great weekend and hopefully I will still have a video to post next week. But in case I don't, y'all have a great Thanksgiving and happy cropping. Thank you again for watching.